Where's the beef? Here is the beef. We're going to cover that from head to toe. Plus, we'll sneak some umami into this week's secret ingredient. The show is called Great TV. And the gadget is even greater. It's all coming up. Fired up. Rolling here, it's uh, from the birthplace of American barbecue, Great TV in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. We got Jack Waybor, three-time South Carolina state champion, and Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. And uh, I got to get this growler. Oh, we're yeah. growling again today, yeah. huh? What do we got? From the Charleston does, does Beer it Exchange, it? which, you know, it says... It says... Bear? Bear Red Rocket. Bear Red, Ro anyway. Red Rocket Ale. Red Rocker. I'm ready. Right? Let's eat it. I think Let's Red Rocker it. is a is like a that Greenville brewery, isn't it? Uh, that was yeah, something like that. I don't remember. It smells really good. So we're oh, uh, man, going with the local growler here today. That has a very nice uh, chocolatey look to it. Uh, does Tony get a growler today or not? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere along the way, Tony gets a glass of beer. I'm sure it. of it. Anytime. Oh, it's six point eight percent. Cheers to you. And uh, summertime. We got lots to cover. Cool. We got some foam in the One beard. One of the cool things about having this beer uh, awesome beard kind of mustache thing is uh, <laughs> when I drink beer with a uh, good solid body to it, it gets in my mustache. What's that? Ain't this no is that. Bill actually gave me something to hold today. Uh, and, you know, where is the iPod? I the just iPad. figured you'd look at it. So, uh, actually, I read it. we have uh, Bill handing me the Dean Bros Get Fired Up cookbook. And I got to say, uh, I was leafing through it, and there were some really nice recipes in there, Bill. They seem to. They got. They seem like good boys. Like was that there? Yeah, they're tailgating and having a good time, and and uh, I I, so they, I enjoy them. It's so. Jamie and Bobby and Melissa Clark. And how Melissa, much? How much you think is theirs? Melissa probably did the work. Jamie and Bobby did the photo ops and probably created the recipes. You know what? That's all right. If Melissa needs somebody to help her write another book, give me they a call. Were, they were well trained. That's right. Cool. Good but boys. anyway, it must be new because I. Got a copy of it. I'm glad Bill gave me something to hold today. All right. Uh, let's uh, get right into it. You said you had a letter asking about the cuts of beef. We did. We got a letter uh, somewhere along the way, and I don't know if I actually have the letter, but somebody asked me uh, if we would go through and do a little something on, because I'm a butcher by trade, or was a butcher by trade, and asked me if it was possible that I could do <sighs> something. <laughs> Caught that one. Could do something uh, and explain uh, uh, cuts of meat a little bit better. So yes, I am not. I am no longer a butcher by trade. Um, I have had plenty of experience journeyman meat cutter, uh, and really enjoyed uh, that part of my career, and still enjoy explaining what meat is all about and what's good to cook and what's good to um, grind up and so on and so forth. So we'll get right to it. I'm sure Bill has the the graphic yeah. somewhere. Yeah, you can pop that up on the screen, that one right there. Because there's a couple different ones. I think one's a, there's a Dutch cut or something, and then a, or is that pork? Uh, English cut of beef? There's English there's English cuts, and there are American cuts. And, you know, it's a shame. You know, we, we had all the fun with Australia one time. It's a shame we couldn't find the Australian cuts of beef. Is there such a thing? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I'd imagine we could Google it and find out. But, None of them uh, looked all that much different. But basically, when you talk about, like, the American cuts of beef, I guess I'd say that's American cuts of beef. What's the best cuts for, uh, let me see that. This one fell in the pool. <laughs> what are the best cuts for barbecue? For barbecue, well, I'll tell you, the the fattiest cuts come from the front shoulder of the cow, which is called chuck. And when you're going to the grocery store and you're buying chuck or shoulder roast, that comes off the foreleg. And then as you move on back, the cow, of course, they sell neck meat, and you can buy neck meat, um, and it's under uh, a lot of that carnious, really? a lot of the carnious sada that you buy, and so on and so forth, comes off the neck. Um, but they really start cutting meat at the chuck. That's where the bulk of the meat is, um, and you know they they grind everything, or they'll make hamburger out of it, or make stew meat out of it, or make something out of the whole cow. They don't like throw the neck away. meat is really like 
stuff you would get? Sure. It, it's probably in ground beef, I wouldn't doubt. If you, nothing else, you don't think of there being much in there. If nothing else, they'll sell it for dog food, I'm sure. So the chuck is the shoulder. What chuck we know is of as, as, as the top of the shoulders. The top of the shoulder. And, and I would think that's, le that's very lean. It's not. No, it's not lean. Actually, the, uh, the cow, most of the cow's weight is in its hind quarter. And the hind quarter is called the round. And the round is very lean. The muscle is very lean. Kind of like... The animals are pretty much the same. Um, a round is actually a cow ham. So you got to be um, aware that when you're doing, you know, when you're getting round, it's going to be lean. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of fat in it. And quite frankly, in beef, fat is flavor. So you need to make sure that, you know, if you're, if you're looking for good lean meat, yeah, you want to go to the round. But if you're looking for the flavor, then you want to move up the cow a little bit towards, towards the top end, which is where we're going to find um the shank or not the shank the, the sirloin and the loin and the rib meat and all those things up that end so and that's where the that's where the uh the t-bone comes off of the loin and the t-bone is um part when you look at a t-bone steak part of it is the filet which is the tenderloin and the other half is a new york strip so when you're getting boneless filet or boneless new york strip all they're doing all they did was harvest that out of the loin okay so what when you talk about the actual flavor of the beef, maybe not counting in the fat part of it. Is there a part that tastes, someone told me, the further you get back on the cow, the funkier the taste, is that true? I don't, I don't think that's generally true. My favorite cut of meat is the sirloin. I really enjoy the sirloin. And, and I think it's got the beefiest flavor. It's got the best flavor. Um, it's got a good fat content in it. It's, it's, but it's not so fat that it's lean. Yeah, That's and the, it right the there. sirloin's up on top. Uh, it has a bigger piece on this one right here. Um, it's kind of like where he'd get the tramp stamp tattoo. That's right, okay. right on that little area right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, you know, as you move on down to sirloin, you move into the rump. I'm trying to think and, of it, I, like when you compare it to a human being. <laughs> Oh, maybe that's where they get branded. I haven't seen a cow with a tramp stamp, but hey, you know, it's possible. Wow. Unless it says, you know, 3R Ranch or something like that. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But uh, that's generally true. Uh, Barbecue-wise, a, a lot of cooks cook chuck. Um, of course, brisket is the, is the granddaddy of the barbecue meats. Um, but they cook brisket because it, and the, in the days of old, brisket was what I would consider to be a low-utility meat. Um, it was cheap. And that's what they made barbecue out of. And they're, the real art to making barbecue, as you know, Bill, is to take a cheap cut of meat and making it into something. And that's what barbecue is all about for me. So if you're going uh, cheap and you want best flavor, you'd say brisket. Brisket. Easy enough. But if you want good steak, sirloin. Okay. If you want tender steak, ribeye. If you want somewhere in the middle, New York strip. There you go. There you go. Quick look. Next week, we'll check out the pig. Let's try right not now. to uh, let's try not to let this blow away. Let's grab the great plate right now. I'll put it down under here. Thank you to Chris M. Chris M. sent us a little note, sent us this picture, and he writes, "We had a barbecue yesterday, and I threw a Boston butt, half brisket, and a chicken on the grill. Mm. Take a look at that." And I thought I'd send a Man. picture in for the great plates. The pork and the brisket had a nice bark on the outside, which you can see—a nice little glossy bark, and uh, very juicy on the inside. It looks really good. That's awesome. Look Thanks, at Chris. That. He says, keep up the good work, guys. Remember, if you ever want to send us a great plate, we love getting them. We do like our great plates, and make sure, um, you know, the easiest place to get it, of course, is to go on Tumblr and, uh, or on the website and, and register yeah. through Tumblr. But certainly, you're welcome to send them to me direct, uh, jacketgreattv.com, or post them up on the Facebook page, which is always a good place to. And make sure while you're at the Facebook page, tell all your friends to like it, because we're still... Looking, looking on for, for 1,000 likes on the Facebook The likes Facebook were at page. 650, maybe? Yeah, we're moving on up. i got to say, every week it gets a little more, and every time we talk about it, a couple more people hit it. But see, that's going to make, down the road, that'll make a difference, because once more, more and more people are like doing these searches through Facebook. That's right. And if we, people like, I noticed today, they had like, people from your inner circle liking certain things. And that's right. So, when you then search in Google, we'll show up there you know bill and i are always on the quest to become barbecue superstars and that's really what we're going and uh you know we want to be able to uh have a thousand friends out there um and that's uh that's good stuff for me i better hurry are you up growling here. i'm getting low uh -oh. i'm still got a little bit um, left here our gadget today three in well this is a four in one gadget here mm. When I said the name of the show is Great TV, but the gadget is greater. The gadget is greater. This is a little gadget that I picked up. I don't know if I got picked up. I, I, I don't think I picked it up. I think it came to me as a gift. Now, check this cool little dude out. 
You open it up and it has two parts to it. it. Has a little drawer in here that's also a measuring cup. And inside the drawer is the is the holder for it. And it has a little uh, has a little uh, knob on the other side. And this piece right here hooks into that piece there. Oh, no, I, I need see. this. I need this part right here. Oh, I see. That piece hooks into this part right here, and it is a zester, a grater, a mandolin, and a hard cheese grater. So you hook it all together just like this, and you have your, it sits on a counter, and you have a good solid surface to be able to. The drawer Sorry. goes in there, and you get your little pusher piece over there. So you don't cut your fingers off. So you don't off. cut your fingers off, and it's got little grooves on there, and you ride it on there, and you just go ahead and push it over, and this one slices, this one uh, grates, this one uh, grates hard cheese, and this one is a zester. And I gotta tell you, I use the zester probably more than really? anything. Yeah. Um, I use the this for coleslaw. Yeah, that would be a good piece for coleslaw. Anyway. Uh, the, uh, the little mandolin part is good for cucumbers or zucchini or slicing vegetables, carrots, whatever you're going to slice up into small pieces. But please, as always, make sure you follow proper safety precautions so you don't hurt yourself and always use the protective guard here. Barbecue uses, you know, you could use, I'm sure you'd slice some onions with that. Sure, absolutely. Uh, or cheese, and like or I said, coleslaw. I, I, I use the zester a lot. I like to use lemon zest when I'm building sauces. I use lemon or lime zest a lot, and uh, that allows me to, uh, you know, do a lemon or a lime pretty quick. So there you go. good stuff right there. It's a, a four, four in one. one. I probably, it got, I think it came to me through a fundraiser. You know, one of those uh, home uh, uh, school fundraisers, or uh, what do they call that uh, chef thing that. Pampered Chef. Everybody, that's what it is. Yeah, that looks like a pampered chef. Something like that. And I thought it was just a cool little gizmo. And believe it or not, if it's right in one of the compartments of my toolbox, and you, you've all seen my toolbox, it's an awesome piece. And uh, it fits right in there. So. Everybody needs a mandolin. That's right. All right, that's our right. secret ingredient we, we teased umami. Umami. And you could explain what umami is because well, you, you, know, you know much more. I got a, I got an interesting uh, comment letter, if you want to call it that, from a fella who asked me where I buy my umami. And you really don't buy umami. You buy things that have umami in it. Um, your tongue tastes five different flavors. Um, you have uh, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and of course savory. And savory is called is what is called umami. Now the Japanese and the Chinese uh, cuisines use a lot of things that have natural flavor enhancers in them, and umami is a natural flavor enhancer. So this one right here is called kelp powder, and I found that kelp powder gives me the best natural organic source of umami um, around. It really does a great job. I use it in sauces, I use it in, uh, I'll sprinkle some in rubs, um, and I like it better than, a lot of people use uh, monosodium glutamate, and, and there's nothing wrong with using MSG in what you do. I just like to use a little more organic uh, flavor enhancer, so I use kelp powder instead. So this is like has some of the same elements that you have. It has with? has the same flavor enhancing qualities really? as as I'm really afraid to do this. It, 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 you, you, it's not bad. I did it on the way over. All you kind of taste is a little savory taste. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. You would think it since it's seaweed, it would taste like really nasty stuff, but actually it has a nice mild flavor. I thought kelp was fish. Kelp is seaweed. Okay. So. And next that, best thing. Next best thing. Kelp so powder. kelp powder is good. Uh, I bought this at uh, something different country store. Uh, you internet uh, something different country store. You can get it at any of the, at any of the uh, higher end internet spice places, Penzies, Pendries, all of those. So you put it in what? I, sauce? I, I, I use it in sauce. I use it in soups. Uh, really good for stuff like uh, cream soups, like clam chowder or uh, um, uh, uh, what's the one they make here all the time? Oh, uh, uh, crab, uh, crab, she crab, she crab soup, that kind of thing. It just picks the flavor up and just gives it a little bit of a gentle boost, so you get a real nice flavor on it. Hard uh, to find? No, not kelp powder. You got to know. You got to find it. I mean, it's not hard to find. It's not sitting on your uh, on your big box grocer's uh, shelf. But if you go to uh, some of your better stores, your better kitchen stores might have it. Um, you might be able to find it at some of your better retailers, uh, uh, a local here in town, uh, Harris Teeter or uh, Whole Foods might have something along that lines. Kelp powder sitting on the shelf. Uh, 
it's good stuff. I, I, you know, it, it does bring the umami flavor. And of course, we've talked about umami, anchovies, and Worcestershire sauce, and all that. It's just another one of those. Um, it's don't. I wouldn't use it if you're going to use it in a rub. Make sure you ride it with something. When I say ride it with something, put it in the rub and kind of let it ride on with the salt or or the pepper. Don't try to sprinkle it right onto something directly. Uh, I think by the time rider. you cook something for a few hours, that kind of disappears. Mm, yeah, but the flavor enhancer quality is still there. All right. Uh, Trust me kelp powder. Kelp powder. I, I take your word for it. Good stuff. Uh, that's it. I'm done with this too. So, well, you got to hurry up. We done. Uh, we done. Drank our beer today, uh, gang. Remember, uh, contact us. Uh, Jack at GreatTV.com. Bill at GreatTV.com. Subscribe all you can. Uh, we need your. Uh, you need your help to get to a thousand. You know what I need people to do? The uh, uh, on iTunes, make a comment. Even if you've already made a comment and given us a nice rating before. Do it again. It seriously helps us. We're getting into the, I think we're getting into the barbecue season here. We're going to get a lot of people looking for this we need show, to be, so. We need to be recognized on the big on the big ones. I know we were on the homepage for uh, Blip TV, weren't we at one not, point? Yeah, not so much recognized as much as, you know, it just lets people find us. Utilized. So, That's yeah. right. We need to be utilized. Otherwise, this is a big old internet show and That's it's hard right. to find. And we're here for you. Remember, uh, gang, uh, buy local, think global, stay sustainable, and every chance you get, uh, hug your mama.